tonight on Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. Get the latest direct from head coach Jerry Kill. Even as a staff, I had to, you know, it's everybody down is that it was a very good win. Plus, get an exclusive preview of Brick by Brick, an all-access behind-the-scenes web series about your Golden Gophers. And Coach Kill prepares you for this weekend with a film breakdown of the Iowa Hawkeyes. They're a, they're a technique-conscious team. Center blocks away. They're going to keep they're going to keep the center off that backer. They want that backer cleared up. It's your weekly look inside Golden Gopher football, and it starts right now. Welcome to the latest edition of Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. It's your weekly look inside the Golden Gopher Football Program, and I'm your host, Natalie Nias. The Gophers took the field on a beautiful September morning last weekend and improved to 4-0 by marching all over the San Jose State Spartans. Mitch Leidner, in his first start for the Gophers, ran for four touchdowns, becoming only the second quarterback in school history to do so. To take us through all of Saturday's action, Mike Max joins head coach Jerry Kill in the Hall of Fame room. Coach, uh, a 4-0 preseason was exactly what you, the way you wanted to start it, but you did some things. You got a lot out of that. You faced a great quarterback on Saturday. You had to make halftime adjustments a couple times during this. I would think the preseason went as close to according to plan as it could. Well, it went good, and, and uh, I think probably even as a staff, I had to, you know, I'd set everybody down is that it was a very good win. I think that a lot of people don't understand that football team won 11 games last year, played Stanford 21-17. Uh, to 17. Uh, 22 starters back, uh, well coached, and a, and a great quarterback. I mean, we had all kinds of NFL scouts in here watching him. So there, there's no question that we, we beat a good football team, uh, a totally different one, however, than we'll play uh, this week because sure. you had a, a group that's going to throw it every snap, and yep. now you go back to a team that can grind it on you in the play action pass. and and uh, technically very sound. So, uh, but uh, we're, the, the good news is we're 4-0 and it's always a lot easier to prepare and coach and teach when, when you're winning. Uh, I was hard on our youngsters uh, the day after and, and uh, on the things they didn't do very well. And they probably thought, dang, did you know, that guy ever satisfied? And, and the answer is no. <laughs> head football coach in the Big Ten, so the answer is no, guys. Mitch Leidner played well for you. Give us an assessment from a coach's standpoint. Well, I, I, I thought that Mitch did exactly what we needed to do to win the game. He didn't turn the ball over and he moved the chains. And as a, as a head football coach, that's what you want. And, and uh, you know, he ran hard, he played physical. Um, you know, I talked to him throughout the game and, and uh, you know, seemed, you know, didn't get tired. I mean, just, he just really played well, did what we needed to do. Um, as we go back and watch the film, study it, talk with him, uh, you know, he had to check some things on the line of scrimmage. Uh, there's four or five checks in there that, uh, um, he, you know, he would uh, not do this week, you know, uh, as he goes through the progression of learning. But uh, he certainly did well. Anytime your quarterback doesn't turn over the football and, and you're scoring on about every possession, that's a yep. good thing. You know, you, Donnell Kirkwood, obviously, when the season started, we said maybe the feature back are kind of, we never thought you'd have a feature back. Then Roderick Williams for a bit, and now David Cobb has 125 yards. What do you see in him? Has, has he turned a corner as a running back? Yeah, he has. You know, uh, we, we've been tough on David as, his, as he's progressed, but uh, the biggest difference in him is his maturity. And uh, it's just like anything when you're a freshman. Uh, sometimes you're not very mature as a freshman. And uh, uh, he's grown up. Uh, he's taken uh, what he's doing very seriously. I think a lot of it has to do with his Damian Wilson coming here. He's a cousin. and. There's always competition in yep. the family who's going to do well, but uh, he's been focused and uh, he's played well for us. And so uh, we're in a good situation with uh, uh, those kids. And, uh, you know, Donnell's getting closer. Uh, he could have played on Saturday, but uh, I remember asking him uh, before the game, I said, you know, where are you at? And he said, oh, 85 or 90 percent. And I said, you got to be at 100. You know, we, we need you at 100. And so uh, I think we got out of the the, 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 the season or the early season, so to speak. Uh, and I, I look for him to, to be 100% uh, by Saturday. And Philip Nelson has one of those tricky injuries because it's a hamstring. Anybody knows yeah. a hamstring knows you don't really know until you play if it's 100% or not. Can you give an assessment of him this week? Yeah, I, I think that, I think he's, he's still a question mark and, and uh, 
he could go back there and hand the ball off but to, to run and throw it and plant. Um, you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, again, it's a very tricky injury. Uh, we do all kinds of, our training staff does a great job of, of testing and, and uh, making sure, and we got a device. I mean, we, we had all things that you, you can do. That you can do. It's still do. a hamstring, It's right? still a hamstring. <laughs> and so until you get out there and get sweating, uh, you just don't know. But uh, we also got to be smart. We got a long season. And, uh, you know, you don't want to, you go out there and, and uh, he tears a hamstring and done for the year. That's not a good thing. So we're, 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 we're pretty cautious with our players. And we want them healthy. And, again, uh, a player playing 90% against somebody that's 100%, still not a good thing. Still not, not a good not thing in the level. Big Ten. Uh -uh. Yep. What do you mean to you? Lots of support for Coach Kill at the, at the game. I know you want to make it about the kids, but it has to make you feel good when you see all these people come up to you and have signs. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing is the, the, the people of the state of Minnesota uh, since the day I walked in here. And, you know, you're never going to please everybody and you get different things, emails, so forth. But that's just part of being a head football coach. But uh, people have been great to, to Rebecca and I since the day I walked in. And, and uh, you know, uh, we, we've, this is our home and, and mm -hmm. we feel great about it. And, and uh, certainly everybody has challenges and so forth. But, uh, you know, our focus and mine is, is it has to be on our football team and our, our players. But to tell you that uh, uh, the support doesn't help you uh, would be uh, somebody would be not telling the truth. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's, it's very appreciative and, and all the emails and all the things. I mean, the ones that I haven't been able to get to yeah. is that uh, I, I certainly appreciate the support. And, and uh, you know, we're still going to work on delivering what we're supposed to do. And that's to, to build a good program. Very good. We'll talk more about Iowa, the upcoming opponent, and break some things down in the film session a bit later in the show. When we return, Mike Max will join Coach Kill in the film room to break down the top gopher plays from Saturday's game. Better athlete and then, and then the down safety, and he gets by him, uh, drops his shoulder, uses his hands, and then Mitch throws a great ball, and, you know, that's a big play. And still to come, an exclusive preview of Brick by Brick, an all-access, behind-the-scenes web series about your Golden Gophers.